representative of Pakistan. President, the Pakistan delegation is obliged to respond to the statement made by the Foreign Minister of India earlier today. Her statement is a litany of falsehoods about my country and a travesty of facts and history. It only reflects the de deceit and hostility of her government towards Pakistan. We reject all the baseless allegations made in that statement. These allegations are designed principally to deflect global attention away from the brutalities being perpetrated by India's over half a million occupation force against innocent and unarmed Kashmiri children, women and men in Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Their call for freedom has been met with characteristic Indian brutality. During the last two and a half months, over 100 innocent Kashmiris have been killed hundreds blinded and thousands injured by Indian bullets and pellets, including infants, children, women, and men. This is the worst form of state terrorism, a war crime, that India has continued to perpetrate in the situation of foreign occupation in Jammu and Kashmir for the past many decades. Pakistan demands a full and impartial investigation of these Indian atrocities and massive human rights violations in Kashmir. We ask that India accept the investigation proposed by the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and allow them unfettered access for that purpose. Mr. President, Jammu and Kashmir never was and never can be an integral part of India. It is disputed territory, the final status of which has yet to be determined in accordance with several resolutions of the UN Security Council. The right of the Kashmiri people to self-determination has been recognized and promised to them by UN Security Council and by India and Pakistan. For 70 years, India has prevented the Kashmiris through force and fraud from exercising this right and holding the UN supervised plebiscite to enable the Kashmiris to determine their political destiny. The struggle of the Kashmiri people for self-determination is a legitimate struggle and they have the right to receive moral and political support from the international community. Mr. President, the attack on the Indian Army base in Uri, particularly its timing, has all the hallmarks of an operation designed to divert attention from India's atrocities in occupied Jammu and Kashmir. The international community is well aware that several such incidents have been staged in the past to serve India's tactical and propaganda objectives. India is utilizing the Uri incident to blame Pakistan for the current Kashmiri uprising and divert attention from its brutal occupation. India's government is delusional if it believes that it can isolate any country. It is India itself which, because of its war crimes in Kashmir and elsewhere, and because of its war mongering, is likely to be isolated in the international community. Mr. President, it is India that has long been a sponsor and practitioner of state terrorism. Over the course of the last half century, India has sponsored and perpetrated terrorism and aggression against all its neighbors, creating terrorist groups, destabilizing and blockading neighbors to do its strategic bidding, and sponsoring subversion, sabotage, and terrorism in various parts of my country. The recently captured Indian spy and intelligence officer, Kul Bhushan Yadev, has confessed to India's support to such terrorist and subversive activities, particularly in the province of Balochistan and the federally administered tribal areas. Indeed, it was Kulbushan who was financing, arming, and supporting individuals and entities listed under the UN sanctions regime. India's policy of interference in Pakistan, especially its attempt to destabilize Balochistan, are now a matter of record. This is a blatant violation of the principles of the UN Charter. Mr. President, instead of aiming to destabilize Pakistan, the Indian government would do well to address India's own vast internal problems and the dozen or so insurgencies going on in its own country. For the Indian Foreign Minister to claim that her country has imposed no preconditions for talks with Pakistan is yet another falsehood. It is India that suspended talks with Pakistan more than a year ago. It is India that has refused to resume them 
despite repeated offers from Pakistan and indeed advice from the international community. The latest offer of talks was made by the Prime Minister of Pakistan from the rostrum of this very General Assembly. But let us be clear, talks are no favor to Pakistan. They are in the interest of both Pakistan and India and the people of both countries. Let me reiterate that Pakistan is ready and willing for serious and result-oriented talks with India, especially to resolve the outstanding court dispute of Jammu and Kashmir, which is imperative for durability.